Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation, an octic trigonometric equation because of the eighth power. We have sine x to the eighth power plus cosine x to the eighth power equals 97 over 128, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, even though one of the solutions may be incomplete. So I want to start for my first method. I want to start with something like sine squared x plus cosine squared x. We know that it's equal to 1, right? Hopefully. Now, I'm going to take this and square both sides. That's going to give me sine x to the fourth power plus cosine x to the fourth power plus 2 sine squared x cosine squared x equals 1. And then from here, basically my goal is to get some type of relationship between the sum of squares, which is 1, and the sum of 8 powers, okay? So for that purpose, um, I want to go ahead and isolate the sum of the fourth powers and write this as 1 minus 2 sine squared x cosine squared x, which then can be turned into something else. Let's go ahead and square both sides, and that should give us sine x to the 8th plus cosine x to the 8th plus 2 sine x to the fourth, cosine x to the fourth. And on the right-hand side, we have a difference squared. So that'll be, I'll probably write it here. I don't think that's going to fit there. Four sine x to the fourth, cosine x to the fourth, plus their product is going to be, obviously, minus sine. So that'll be minus 2ab. That's going to give you four sine squared x, cosine squared x. Awesome. Now, obviously, I do want to isolate this, right? This is the one that I want to isolate. Let's go ahead and do that. Sine x to the eighth, cosine x to the eighth. From here, if you subtract this, we already have four minus two is going to give us two. So there'll be one plus two sine x to the fourth, cosine x to the fourth, minus four sine squared, cosine squared. Awesome. Now, one thing to keep in mind is we do know what the uh, sum of eighth powers is, which is 97 over 128. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this with 97 over 128. So I can come up with an equation with a single variable. Do we have a single variable? Looks like we do have two variables, but guess what? I can go ahead and call this T or any other variable you want. If you want coffee, you can use that. And this will just be T squared, right? So it's basically a single variable and this is quadratic. Nice. So we can kind of write this as 2t squared minus 4t plus 1 equals 97 over 128. If you subtract that from 1, that'll be 1 minus that. So the difference between these two things is 31. So it'll just be plus 31 over 128 and that's equal to 0. At this point, you could probably multiply everything by 128 to get rid of the fraction, or you can just use the quadratic formula with this. Doesn't matter. I'll multiply because it's easier that way, I think, sort of. 256t squared minus 512t plus 31 is equal to 0. Nice. Now, I, I hope to get something nice from here, right? Uh, a rational solution and rational solutions are going to be kind of hard to find because we have a lot of choices for this one. You know, there, there's something called a rational root theorem, which tells you, okay, you can take the divisors of the constant term and divide it by all possible divisors or factors of the leading coefficient. And all those combos are going to give you possible solutions. Like, for example, you can have 31 over 256. 31 over 8, negative 31 over 2, so on and so forth. There's so many options because 256 has a lot of factors. Well, I think it has 9 positive and 9 negative, a total of 18 factors. And 31 can be, has 4 factors, so it's kind of like 4 times, uh, what was the other number? I forgot, 18. 4 times 18, 72. Of course, I'm also including the overlap. Some of these can overlap. It's kind of Hard though, because 31 is prime, so I don't think we're gonna hardly ever have any overlaps. But you get the idea, hopefully, but look up rational root theorem. Hopefully you'll get a better idea. 
So that's a lot of choices. Maybe I should use the quadratic formula. Let me try finding the discriminant because that will give me a perfect square, hopefully, which means we have rational solutions, right? Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. One thing that might make this problem a little easier is that uh, 512 is 256 times 2. So these two actually give me 2 times 100, 2 times 16 squared, which is 32 squared. So we might find common factors. So here's what I'm thinking. 512 squared. I hope you don't hear that sound because that's basically one of my some type of water irrigation system or some of the sprinklers or whatever. I would, it's not making too much noise. So 512 can be written as 2 times 256. If you square that, you got to get 400 uh, times, 4 times 256 squared. So I can kind of uh, factor out 4 times 256 here inside the radical, of course. And inside, I'm going to have 256 minus, uh, let's see, uh, did I take that out? Yeah, just 31. Okay, cool. <laughs> that was easy. And this will be 225. How beautiful is that, right? 225, by the way, happens to be 15 squared. So if you put together the uh, quadratic formula, kind of put it back together, you're going to get something like this. So this is going to be, wait, did I call that delta? I meant to write the whole thing, I guess, but this was part of delta. Anyways, you get the idea. This should be uh, the x values or whatever my variable was, t values in this scenario, right? Okay. Now we can easily simplify this because uh, these are all perfect squares. And the square root of their product is going to be 2 times 16 times 15, uh, which is 480, by the way, right? Okay, 480. Great. So this is 512 plus minus 480. It's square root, by the way. Divide by 512. Let's go ahead and split it up into two solutions. If you add 512 and 480, that's going to give you 992 divided by 512. That's one of the solutions, kind of like a weird number, but we can simplify it. And their difference is supposed to be 32 over 512. By the way, these are both powers of 2, so they'll cancel out. This is 2 to the 9th. This is 2 to the 5th. So we're going to have a 2 to the 4th at the bottom, which means this can be written as 1 over 16. And this one can be written as, let's see, 446 divided by 256, and then 223 divided by 128. I'm not sure if 223 is prime or not. Let me just quickly check for 7. It doesn't work. Uh, 11 doesn't work. Um, 13 is not going to work because if you subtract from 260, you end up with 37. It's not going to work. So I don't think it's divisible by any of the primes. Uh, so it's prime, probably. Anyways, those are the t values, but let's just go with this one because this one is particularly interesting. The other one, I'm not sure how that's going to turn out, but 1 over 16 seems to be more interesting. What is t, by the way? t is sine squared cosine squared. Nice. So t equals sine squared cosine squared. By the way, I apologize. This is going to be a rather long video, and I don't want to just cut it off real quick, but I'm going to show you. If you square root this, at least one of the solutions is going to be this one, and if you multiply both sides by 2, this is going to give you sine of 2x equals 1 half, which is equal to sine of 30 degrees, which can be written as pi over 6. And from here, you can kind of set up equations like 2x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, or 2x equals pi minus that, so on and so forth. And this will definitely give you solutions if you pursue them, one of which is going to be pi over 12, the other one is going to be 5 pi over 12, so on and so forth. We're going to take a look at those. But I want to talk about the second method. I hope you don't consider this incomplete because second method is probably going to be a little incomplete too. But I still want to show you how that works so that you can do the rest, okay? So now we have the sum of the eight powers and the answer is 97 over 128, right? That was it. Now we can do the following. Cosine 2x can be written in three ways, but I'm going to use two of them. One of them is 2 cosine squared minus 1. From here, I can isolate cosine squared and write it as 1 plus cosine of 2x divided by 2. And similarly, sine squared can be written as 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. These are very important formulas. They're co called power reduction formulas. Let's say you're integrating cosine squared. You can definitely use this, cosine sine squared. You can even use this for higher powers like fourth power, eighth power. Or oh, did I say eighth? Absolutely. Because what you can do now is take the eighth power and write it as second power 
to the fourth power. Make sense? And the same thing for cosine squared to the fourth power. And now sine squared is going to be replaced with something linear. And then linear to the fourth is going to give you fourth powers. But one thing that's really cool about this equation is from the binomial theorem, uh, quite a few numbers are going to cancel out. Notice uh, a plus b to the fourth and a minus b to the fourth. The alternating terms are going to cancel out, leaving us with something nicer. And hopefully you can solve it, turning into a biquadratic. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.